Cardiac arrest is one of the most stressful situations for new ER nurses, but it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. In this video, I'm going to break it down into simple steps so you know exactly what to focus on when every second counts. And if you want to take your learning further, you can also check out our resources. We have our essentials book, our bundle for download, which comes with the essentials book, our charting book and scenarios book. And we also have our course available. Now let's walk through how to keep cardiac arrest simple so you can stay calm and take action. So let's be real, cardiac arrests are intense. The adrenaline is high, there's a lot happening at once, and it can feel overwhelming, especially if you're new. But here's what I want you to know. Feeling anxious is completely normal. Even experienced nurses feel that rush. You're not expected to be perfect. You're not expected to know everything. What is expected is that you show up, you stay focused, and are willing to learn. The rest will come with time and experience. So breathe, take it one step at a time, and know that you're not alone in this. If you take anything from this video, let, let it be this. Stick to the priorities. These are the core actions that truly make a difference during a cardiac arrest. First is going to be high quality CPR. This means compressions that are fast, deep, and allow for full recoil. Good CPR keeps blood flowing to the brain and the heart. Second is oxygenation. Use a bag valve mask with oxygen cranked up to 15 liters per minute. It's not about overventilating. It's about making sure oxygen is available when circulation starts back up. And if the patient is intubated, the same principle, bag every five to six seconds. Third is going to be defibrillation. Shock immediately for ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. The patch should be on early and ready to go so that when they're needed, they're already on and ready to go. And finally, the H's and T's. You may not be solving them, but be aware of them. Things like hypoxia, hypovolemia, or attention pneumothorax might be the root cause, and catching those early on can help change the outcome. Stick to these, and you'll know you're doing the most important work in those critical moments. Know that clear communication during a cardiac arrest can be the difference between calm and chaos. First, make sure that roles are clearly assigned at the start. Compressor, medications, recorder, airway, everyone should know where they fit in. Second, confirm the timing with the provider. Ask, how often should we check the rhythm? Every two minutes? Do you want epinephrine every three minutes or every five minutes? Don't assume. Ask because you're going to be the recorder if this is your patient and you need to know how often you're doing the pulse checks, the rhythm checks, and how often you're going to be doing the epis. And again, if you're the recorder, your job is going to be to call things out in advance. You can say rhythm check in 20 seconds or epinephrine is doing 20 seconds. It helps the team stay mentally prepared by giving them that 20 second heads up. Hey, in 20 seconds, we're doing a pulse check. In 20 seconds, another epinephrine is due. And then keep the room noise under control. It's hard to follow commands if people can't hear you adequately or they can't hear the team leader adequately. And finally, always verify and repeat back. Whether you're giving medications or relaying an order, double checking helps prevent errors. Good communication is an extra. It's a must. It's absolutely essential during cardiac arrest. Here's the good news. Cardiac arrests are intense, but they're also predictable. Once you know the rhythm, the steps are simple and repeatable. You'll do a pulse and rhythm check every two minutes, no guessing, so just stick to the timer. You're going to give epinephrine every three to five minutes, usually right after a rhythm check if it's still a non-perfusing rhythm. If it's ventricular fibrillation or pulses ventricular tachycardia, you're going to defibrillate immediately, then go back into CPR. And if it's asystole or PEA, no shock, just good CPR, and then again, giving that epinephrine every three to five minutes. That's it. You're not going to be reinventing in the wheel every time it's the same core actions over and over and when in doubt return to these basics and you're going to be doing the right thing during a cardiac arrest there are going to be a few key medications that you're going to hear over and over so let's break them down again epinephrine it's going to be the most common it's one milligram iv or io every three to five minutes no matter the rhythm for adults right amiodarone is given for refractory ventricular fibrillation or pulses ventricular tachycardia it's 300 milligrams first dose followed by 150 milligram if the rhythm persists Calcium chloride, usually one gram, is used for hyperkalemia or calcium channel blocker overdose. Sodium bicarb is used for severe acidosis or a tricyclate antidepressant overdose. Normal saline boluses, you can start with one or two liters if hypovolemia is suspected. Dextrose, usually D50, is for hypoglycemia. So again, get that point of care glucose early. And finally, another that you might be hearing often is going to be Narcan, 0 0.4 to 2 milligrams IV or intranasal, used if opioid overdose is suspected another one can be magnesium you're going to do two grams um, 
and you're going to be doing that for Tursat. Again, you're not expected to memorize doses perfectly, but knowing at least the basics of the why and the when these medications are used will help you stay sharp during the code. If a patient isn't responding to CPR and medications, think about the H's and T's. These are the reversible causes of cardiac arrest and treating them can change everything. Starting with the H's, hypoxia, make sure they're getting oxygen and their airway is managed. Hypovolemia, give a fluid bolus, acidosis, consider bicarb. Hypo, hypo and hyperkalemia, for hyperkalemia, use calcium chloride. For hypothermia, start warming measures. For the T's, the tension pneumo, needle decompression, tamponade, uh, pericardial synthesis. Toxins, know the antidotes like Narcan, thrombosis, could it be a massive MI or a PE? If that's the case, may need thrombolytics for the PE, may need to go to cath lab if it's a massive MI and we get ROSC. Again, you don't have to be the one solving these on your own, but recognizing the signs helps the team act fast. Now, let's wrap it up with a few tips that can really boost your confidence and impact during a code. First, again, make sure the roles are clearly assigned at the beginning. Knowing who's doing what reduces confusion and makes everything run smoother. Second, don't just stand back and observe. If it's safe, ask to participate. You learn faster by doing. Learn how to place the pads, do compressions, and work the defibrillator. These are core skills you're going to use often. Ask to try different roles like giving medications, documenting, or helping with the airway. You'll get a more complete picture of the whole process. And if you're comfortable, placing, practice placing an IO. It's a useful skill that's going to come in very handy in different situations in the ER. And finally, don't forget a point of care glucose. It's quick, easy to miss, but crucial in assessing why the patient uh, could possibly be in cardiac arrest. And then every code is a learning opportunity. Be curious, be helpful, and keep building your skill set. And like everything in the ER, there's always going to be more to learn, way more to learn. Here, we kept it to the basics. But again, for now, while you're new, stick to the basics. The ER can feel overwhelming, especially when you're new. I remember how hard it was trying to keep up, worrying about making mistakes, and constantly feeling behind. That's exactly why I created these resources, to help you gain confidence and take control faster. Our ER Nurse Essentials book is your no-fluff guide to essential ER knowledge, covering triage, ABCs, advanced life support, and the most critical conditions, all in a clear, easy-to-understand format. Our charting book teaches you how to document efficiently and safely with real strategies to protect your license and save time. Our scenario book walks you through realistic, high-pressure cases to sharpen your critical thinking and prepare you for the unexpected. And if you want it all, plus step-by-step -step video lessons and practice questions, our full course brings everything together to accelerate your learning. If you're ready to feel more confident in the ER, grab the book, download the PDF bundle, or enroll in the course. Links are in the pinned comment and description below. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.